this, this, this was the design from the very beginning. You can go all the way back to the Garden of Eden and where God was walking in the cool of the day, the Bible says, with, with Adam and Eve. Like he would walk and talk. And that was, it was just, it was God's plan. And you need to know that, that he does want to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. And, and, and for something like, for 99, let me say, 99.9% of you probably will, won't, he won't talk to you like audibly, hear the voice of God, but he does want to talk to your spirit, lead you, lead your heart. He wants to speak to you. And, and next week, next week I'm going to talk to you about how God speaks to you. I'll clear that up for some of you. But Jesus even said in our theme verse, John chapter 10, he characterized this relationship through a conversation, a communication, one that takes listening and hearing his voice. He says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, talking about himself, the good shepherd. And his sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. See, God wants to call you. He wants to call you out by name. He wants to lead you in life through your decisions, through your directions. And when he's brought all his own, he goes on ahead of them. And this is the dynamic that each of us desperately need in our life. It says, his sheep follow him. Because they know his voice. They follow him. Look, not, not because they, they went to church enough. Not because they improved themselves enough. And this is why I'm so stoked about this series. Because I've, really been, I've been praying so much for you guys and anyone that would come. man. That Some people have this, this mindset, this thought that, that Christianity or church is about religion. Or it's about like religious things like fixing yourself up and getting your life better and improving things about yourself and your marriage and your parenting and your th stuff like now which by it happens that's a byproduct of this faith walk sure but christianity is not a religion it's not about those things you do christianity is a relationship that's what it is and jesus is, is trying to tell us like look it's it's a voice i'm leading you and if you 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 will follow me not not if you go to church enough not if you give enough of your stuff away not if you're good enough it's just You'll actually follow me if you do this, this thing, if you hear and know my voice. They will never follow a stranger. You'll never get sidetracked. You'll never, you'll never, you'll never get blindsided. You'll never get swayed away by, by someone or something else because you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You'll hear it. His voice will lead you. In fact, run, you'll run away from that because you don't even recognize a stranger's voice. You'll see it like, uh-uh, that's not true. That's not the right path. That's not the right decision. That's not the right job. That's not the right woman. Come on, somebody. That's not the right man. Come on, God. You'll know it. You'll know it. You'll know the stranger's voice discerned from God's voice. And what I'm trying to do in this series is to help you distinguish God's voice to this, and to help you hear and learn God's will. And I know for some of you, this is critical. Like in the stage that you're at in your life, for some of you, you are on like like there is a decision or you're, you're, there is a life, like life altering, direction altering decisions that some of you are coming up to or in right now. And it is so critical for you that you would hear the voice of God in this season, that you would know his will. I'm telling you, it's critical. And I really believe that God is going to speak to us as we seek his face. And so we began the series last week. And what I did is I kind of just shared some weapons of mass distraction and the distractions of the enemy. Just tried to identify some things that we can eliminate or, or limit in our life and really just very practically tried to give you a guideline of how to spend time with God. And so if you haven't heard that, it's important to the series. Go watch that online. And, and we actually gave everyone uh, prayer journals for free. They're at the information center. At the end of the service, go grab those because in this season, we're doing 21 days of prayer. We're seeking the face of God. We're seeking the voice of God. We're opening the church Monday through Friday from 6.30 to 7.30, and we're just posturing ourselves and pressing in to hear God so that this can happen. Proverbs chapter 3, 6, listen to God's voice in what? In everything, not just in church, not just when things are tough and you need to, you need to hear them, not just when you're in your devotion time. He says, listen to God's voice before you go into that meeting. Listen to God's voice. Before you respond to that and reply to that text, listen to God's voice. Before you comment on that status, for the love of God, <laughs> listen to God's voice. Just in everything, so that look, in everything you do, in everywhere you go, He is the one, look at this, who keeps you on track. There are some great habits that are going to help you, and I even teach them. 
there's great habits of, of even Sunday and coming and worshiping with the assembly and, and great habits of, of community, habits of Bible study, habits of prayer, and there's all these other habits. But listen, the one that's going to keep you on track right here to listen to God's voice in everything. He says hey, there, that's what keeps you on track, to hear God's voice. And Jesus makes this bold statement in Luke chapter 8, verse 8. This is a, a parable he's sharing, and we're going to study this parable today. Jesus called it the parable of the sower. We're going to study it. In Luke chapter 8, verse 8, um, very clearly when, when I was doing this, this study, I heard very clearly from God that, that kind of to help prepare you for this series that, that God doesn't have a speaking problem. We have a hearing problem. All right? There is no problem with God with communication. He has no problem communicating on your level in a way that you can hear or understand. There's no problem with the word. There's no problem with his voice. The problem is our hearing. That's the problem. Luke 8, 8. It says, Jesus said, I'm speaking, so he who has ears to hear, let him hear. If you could just tune in, right? If you could just cut out the noise and the distractions that are around you, you'd realize that God is speaking to you so much more than you realize. Like he's actually communicating to you. So he, he's, he's saying, I don't have a speaking problem. You have a hearing problem. I'm trying to get to you. And really the story in Luke 8 here, the verse is, that precede that is the parable. He tells the parable. We're going to get into it. And then, and then it gets to Luke 8, 8. And then what Jesus does, he does a crazy thing. He actually interprets his own parable, which he didn't do often. He explains his own parable. A lot of times he would tell a parable, and then he'd just kind of leave the mysteries of the kingdom kind of hidden in, in there on purpose for, for the children of God to, to be revealed. But this one, he said, you know what? This is so important. This is so critical and important that you get this. I have to explain this to you. I'm not going to leave it up to you. I need to explain this because it's so important. Let's study this parable. We're going to back up to verse 5 in your notes and up here on the screen. Jesus says, A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and it was trampled on. It's important for you to remember. It was trampled on, and birds ate it up. All right, that's the first scenario. Here's, here's the next scenario. It said, Some fell on rocky ground. And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. So there were some rocks in the soil. There were some competing things to the seed's growth. Here's the third scenario. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked out the plants. In one translation, it actually says that it grew up with weeds. There was something else, you know, smothering it out. Still, finally, other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop because it had a good place to land a hundred times more than it was sown. And then we get to this verse that we read. When he said this, he called out, he who has ears to hear, let let them hear. It's not that God isn't speaking. It's just not landing on good soil. That's, That's the real problem here. So the verses following, Jesus explains the parable. Let's see what he says in verse 11. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the voice of God. The seed is the word of God, to which some people would say, well, that's the Bible. That's the word of God. Well, they didn't have the Bible back then. Didn't they? they had the Torah, sure. And yes, the word of God is the Bible. It is. But I'm just saying this is as well in the context and what Jesus is saying. This is talking about the, the voice of God here as well, that God is speaking to his people, it is the seed that is being planted and thrown out into people's. He's trying to. He's trying to speak to his people. And the problem isn't words aren't being spoken. The problem isn't the word. The problem is the soil. We need to be better hearers of the word. Better hearers. And there's four different types of scenarios. There's four different scenarios that he goes through. And really what these are, these are four different heart positions. These soils represent the soil of our heart. And every listen, every one of us here is our hearts are in one of these positions. We are in one of these scenarios that is painted and pictured by Jesus. And I would challenge you to to be open to the word of God today. And I challenge you to become better hearers of the word of the voice of God. Here's the first one. Let me show it to you. Here's, I'm going to give you the verse in your notes. I'm going to give you the verse first, and then I'll give you the fill in. Okay, after. Here's the first one in Luke 8, 12. He says, those along the path are the ones who hear, so they're they're hearing. But then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. So every time God tries to speak to you, the devil tries to throw something in the mix 
so you don't receive what God has for you. So that they might not believe and be saved, is what the Bible says. Write this down if you're taking notes. Number one, the first heart soil, the first scenario, the polluted heart. That's what that is. It's a polluted heart. I mean, God's trying to speak, but we have so much junk in our hearts. And don't let that offend you. Don't let that, because we live in a junky, messed up world. That's what's going on here. And I get junk in my heart too, okay? It happens. Don't, don't feel like, oh man, what are you, no, no, I'm not pointing my finger at nobody. This is just, we, we live in a messed up world. And what I'm trying to say is that the enemy is trying nonstop, nonstop to put junk in your heart so that when even God's speaking, it wouldn't matter because it's so polluted. It's just, and there's two forms of pollution. For, pollution in our, in our heart, in the pot, in our, the soil of our heart happens in two different forms. And the first form is, it's like inward and outward. The first one is, is the pollution we do to ourselves. It's the choices we make and the sin that we commit will pollute our heart. And I'm not saying like, oh, you don't, no, 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 point finger like, because everyone here is a sinner. Some people are sinners saved by grace, okay? What I'm talking about here is, 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 is unrepented, unconfessed sin. That's, that's every, every one of us sin. Look here, the sin's not the problem. Sin ain't the problem because every one of us have it. It's, it's some of us hear the voice of God and we know we have sin in our life and we're hearing God and we go, uh-uh, no, no, no. And we just, we hold on to it and we choose to walk in that, in that way. We choose. I'm going to go to this mic because this one is funny. Testing one, two, three. There we go. We choose, we choose to walk in it instead of bringing it before God to the light of God. And that's, so it's not. It's not, hey, every one of us have sin. It's just some of us hear the voice of God and respond by bringing it to the light of God. By bringing it to, and that, that, I'm telling you, this is, you want to hear the voice of God. You're going to have to hear some of this hard truth because sin will pollute your heart. It will keep you from hearing the voice of God. And every single person in here, listen, you will, every one of us will become what our desires have made us to be. Every one of us, you will become what your desires, whatever you desire. And, and God doesn't mind you having desires at all. You can desire stuff. He just doesn't like you having desires over him. Okay? You, we are, listen, we are the sum total of our hungers. That's who you will become. Whatever you hunger most for. And so if you want to posture yourself to hear from God, you just have to know when you hear that voice and you ignore it, it stays on the surface and the devil comes and plucks the revelation. He plucks the truth. He plucks that seed so it doesn't produce harvest in your life. So that's the first way that it comes from. You just need to know, guys, and I do too, that when God speaks, we need to bring stuff to the light. The second form it comes to is not really what we choose. It's what other people are doing. It's what people do to us. It's like every time we try to get close to God, the devil stirs up some relational problem, right? And that happen? A lot of times what he'll do is he'll attack the closest relationships. He'll attack the relationship with your spouse or in your family or in your kids or someone you care about. And, and listen, the, he didn't, the devil's not trying to stir up strife in that relationship just to mess with you guys in that relationship. Please listen. He's trying to stir up strife there so you don't hear from God. He's trying, to, he's trying to get that, he's trying to get so much dissension and grief and strife that in relationships that you have that you would be so polluted that you can't hear from God. I had this happen in my life years ago when, when I was in like a, a group setting and, and uh, one guy just said something. It was critical of me and there were several other people there. And what he said, it was like a criticism of me, but it was based, its foundation was based on like, uh, an untruth it was it was he didn't he only he didn't know the truth he only heard some things and he said something and really I, I most time I just take the high road I'm like you know he don't know you know and so I don't respond to it I'm just like he just he doesn't know God's God knows you know it's okay not that big of a deal the next morning and I'm in my prayer time and I'm about to turn on some worship that thought comes to my mind of what that guy said and it was just a thought it was just a, like a like a second but then a moment later I look up at the clock and 10 minutes pass by how many of you ever got stuck like that, just thinking about that issue? And I thought to myself, oh, my, that affected me so much more than I realized that got into my heart. It's affecting my time with God even, that I can hear from him. I, I, I 
called him, you know, after my, my, my devotion, it was too early. I called him later on in the morning. I said, hey, bro, how's it going? Yeah, and I said, hey, you know what, this, when we were together and, this, and you said this, it really, like, it affected me. It got to my heart. I just wanted to, to tell you that, man, and, and to let you know that what, and I kind of let him know the foundation and where he was, he, you know, what he had heard. He said, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, Pastor Jason. I respect you so much. I didn't mean to. I hear you, man, and, and thank you so much for calling. It was, it was such a great conversation. I hung up the phone, and I felt so much lighter. How many of you ever know what I'm talking about? Just like when you when you you brush something off, and, so, and just like, ugh, it just stays with you, and it's a burden to you. But when you handle that, you handle it, and you handle the way God wants you, you just feel free and light. And I could even hear from God even more. And, and why? Because I did what God said to do. God says in Matthew 18, he says, you, you, when you come to my altar and you try to worship me and you got an offense against someone, get out my face, Jesus said. Don't even, don't even try. Don't even try just because you can't receive anything that I got for you anyway. You got all that stuff and pollution. Go handle that. Go reconcile that over there and come back to the altar because now I can speak to you to where you can understand. Amen, somebody? So we have this pollution going on, whether it's, whether it's the choices we make or the things on the outside that will affect the seed, the voice of God planting on fertile soil. This is what James says in chapter 1, verse 21. Get rid of it. Get rid of all the filth and evil in our lives and just watch what happens next. And then we'll be able to humbly accept the message, the voice, the word that God has planted in our hearts. For it is strong enough to save your soul. I just want, I want to say something. One of the most powerful words in the entire Bible, one of the most beautiful words in the entire Bible is something that has got a bad rap and almost has a religious undertone, but we, I'm trying to redeem this word because it's so beautiful and meaningful. It's the word repent. And that's not like Repent, you dirty sinner. No, no, no. That's not, you ain't going to hear that here, man. That ain't happening, dude. That word repent, honestly, what that word just means is, is that we're heading in this direction. And repent just means to change your direction. That's all. It's a beautiful picture of what it means to listen, to hear God and respond to his voice. If you're taking extra notes, write this down. We can't begin a new life until we turn from the old. We can't. Do you want to hear from God? Do you really want to hear from God? Then we got some of us, this is just where we're at. This might be where you're at, just this, this soil of a polluted heart. There may be some things whether we chose or other people chose, and we allowing it to pollute the voice of God. And if, maybe that's not. For some of you, that's not the soil condition. That's not where you're at. Let's look at the second condition, the second scenario Jesus has for us in Luke 8, 13. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message with joy. So they're hearing again. They're hearing his word, but watch this. But like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. They believe for a while, but they wilt when the hot winds of testing blow. So it's because something else competed with it. There were rocks in the soil. And I've done this one too. I've done where you hear a message and you're like, oh, it was the greatest message I've ever heard. I know that happens every Sunday for you guys. But when you guys leave here and you're like, oh, that was a good word, man. Good word. It challenges you. And you go out here and something happens and it's like it's out the window. It's like you never even heard the word. It's like you never even got the revelation. Why does that happen? Why? What happened there? You want to know why? The second soil condition. That's why. I'm calling it a distracted heart. That's what happened. There were just things that were competing. There were just rocks and things competing with the word and the voice of God. Distra I talked about this last week. I'm not going to belabor this point too much. But distractions can come in many forms. They can Distractions can even be good things in our life. It's just, it has your attention. And for a lot of us, we're not hearing from God because something or someone else has got our attention. We're not able to hear from God. It's like you're in a... In, in the mall during Black Friday or something, you're trying to talk across the mall. It's like, what? What would you say? What? You can't hear a thing because of all the just competing voices. So the technology and, and, and we talked about that last week, but I did it. I was doing some more research. Kids between 8 and 18, listen to this, parents, 8 and 18 years of age are spending 8 hours on Internet, on their devices. 8 hours. How in the world are you going to hear from God? With eight hours of internet, let alone do your homework. Come on, parent. <laughs> Come on, man. Take that thing away. <laughs> Come on, mom. Come on, dad. It's a different message. The distracted heart. 
I, I just, I think all of hell, listen, all of hell is trying to get us distracted from what God wants to say to us. It's trying to distract us from, and it could, it could be something not good. It could be something that is good. It's just distracting. One of the stories that depict this very well in the Bible is the story of where Jesus went over to these two sisters' house, Mary and Martha. Check this out. Jesus is in these two, these two sisters. They're in the same room with Jesus, hearing the same message, yet they get two different responses. You ever wonder why that, how that happens? It's like, you know, someone leaves, leaves the service, just fired up and challenged. The other one is like, ah, uh, that was so cold. No, I'm kidding. I know. I know we got issues. Don't, don't, don't. But, uh, and it's, and it's just, what, because we got what? It could, is it the word? Was there something wrong with the word? Or was there a distraction that the enemy used to steal the word? Look at the distraction. Look at here. Luke 8, 14. The seed that fell among weeds. Oh, here we go. Nope. Luke 10, 39. Let me back it up. She had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was, what was she doing? She was listening to his teaching. But her sister Martha, look what she was doing. She was doing a good thing. Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. Let me tell you, I've done that right there. I've gotten busy serving God instead of spending time with God. And that, it, that's, if you want to serve here at Discovery, that's why we have something. You can actually come to step two today if you want to serve and get connected to ministry. We have something called worship one, serve one. Yeah, God wants you to serve. He wants you, Absolutely. But he also wants you to listen to his voice. So what we do, all of our dream team, the people who serve, we say, hey, worship one service, but make sure you sit and listen to God for another service. She was distracted with her, with her serving. But to hear God's voice, you have to turn down the world's volume. There's something, there's, there's something, there's a nod that needs to be dialed down somewhere in your life in order to hear the voice of God somewhere. Something needs to be shut down. So it could be something that a pollution that's affecting us from hearing the voice of God. It could be a distraction that's affecting us from hearing the voice of God. Here's the third type in verse 14. The seed that fell among the weeds. Has anyone ever tried to grow a weed? You ever tried to grow? You don't have to try to grow a weed, right? Some of you, some of you are thinking about the wrong weed now. Come on now. I saw someone pull out his card. No, I'm kidding. It's legal though, Pastor. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. That's another different message. Dang it. <laughs> right? You don't have, okay, you don't have to try to grow a weed. They grow all by themselves, right? What, when you see weeds all over like someone's house and in their garden, it's, what does that speak to when you see a house like that? You want to know? It speaks to one word, neglect. Neglect. I'm just not that in it. I'm not going to take care of it anymore. The seed that fell among the weeds stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures. Life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they don't, say that word out loud, and they don't, they don't mature. Here's the third one, the immature heart. The immature heart. It's the, I'm saved and I'm fine where I am today in my walk with Jesus. I'm okay. I am, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm good. And God is saying, you might be saved, but I want you to grow up a little bit. You might be saved, you might be going to heaven, but I want you to mature because I have so much more than you can even comprehend right now. I Man, it's time for some of you to go a little bit deeper with God. It's time for some of you to, to, to have a different kind of relationship with God the Father. Veronica and I have, have um, a mature relationship. We have great conversations all the time, deep conversations. We talk about our faith and our future. We talk about our finances. We talk about our family. I don't know why they all begin with F, but we have all kinds. It's an addiction. I don't know. But we have, all, we have just sophisticated conversations about our dreams and our hopes and what God is doing and what we're seeing and sensing and just our kids. And we just, it's a sophisticated, mature conversation. You want to know why? Because we are two mature adults. But my kids, when they were younger, my kids are older now. My, my oldest is 14, Grace. When she was a little, you know, baby, I was one of those parents. I don't know about you guys, but I did the baby towel call. I, I, that last service, I walked down the aisle, and there was a baby, like, and I'm just like, hey, dude, what's up, baby, dude? How do, I'm just trying to get a smile at the kid. If I get the smile, I win. There it is. So I, my girls, I would, 
Who's my baby girl? Who's the baby girl? Who da 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 da? Come, come, Dada, come, Dada. When they say Dada before Mama, winning, winning, and it's just exciting. It's just so they come, come. Can you? Yeah, yeah, Dada. And it's just this. How many you know that I could have talked more sophisticated to my daughter, but she was not mature enough to handle it. How many you know where I'm going here? Amen. But here's the point: some of you are dissatisfied with the level of communication that you have or God has with you. Maybe you just need to grow up. God wants to speak to you so much more than you want to hear from him. And, and, and I, I just, I love seeing my kids grow up to the age they're at right now. And there, there would be times and stages of their life where I would try to speak wisdom. And, all, and it would just be like, <gasps> I mean, you know what I'm talking about. There were just seasons of their life where it's just like, I'm just beating against a dead horse right now. It's just, but I would, I would so like, man, I want them to receive this. And, and now that the, my kids are older, I'm able to go deeper. And even just recently, my daughter went to youth camp. She's 14. She came back. She had amazing experience and encounter with God. So much revelation and insight with God, with others. And it was beautiful. The type of interaction I was able to have with my daughter, my heart was so happy to go to that level of maturity and depth with my girl, can I tell you something? That God is so desperate to go to a deeper level of communication with you that goes beyond ooja poopa doo doo. Ooja poopa da 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 da. No, 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 don't, don't, no, no, don't go that way. Yeah, yeah. God wants, God is so desperate to have more mature conversation with you. So, how do you mature? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12. Since we are surrounded by so many examples of faith, so dig into it. Dig into the study of the examples of faith in the word of God. There are examples of faith around you, people that can disciple you. I mean, you're surrounded. we got to get rid of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that distracts us. We must run the race that lies ahead of us and never give up. We must focus on Jesus Man, when is the last time you took a spiritual inventory and just said, you know what, I need to go to another level. You know what, God, you have more for me. You have more from me, God. I'm not, God I need to dig in. I need to press in further. There is more. Man, I'm going to get into that 21 day of prayer thing in the morning. Oh, that's early, Pastor. I'm with you in spirit, Pastor. I'm praying in the home. Someone told me that last week, week, week. Someone told me that last week. I'm praying, I'm praying. Yeah, I look, I don't like it either. I hate it. I'm, an, I'm a morning person, too. I, I like to get up. But <laughs> make me get in the shower, get dressed, and get around people. That's different, right? Right? But, but I do it. Why? Because that's what mature people do. Okay? Okay, God wants to. Now, don't take offense to that. Some of you, like, can't get there, your work, whatever it is, and stuff like that. No, I, I, don't take offense to that. I'm just saying, look, God wants to have a deeper communication experience with you that goes beyond baby talk. He wants to have sophisticated, mature relationship with you. Hebrews chapter 12, again, let me, let me highlight some words here. Because there's, there's a secret to how you get there. Look at these words I highlighted. Since we are surrounded, we must get rid of everything that slows us down. Especially the, the sin that distracts us. We must run. Ahead of us, never give up. We must focus. In other words, the maturity process can't happen without an us. That maturity, you becoming Christ-like and growing in your discipleship cannot happen without some we. Without some, you need to get in a place where you are in community with other people, where, you, where they know you, you know them. They know your thoughts, they know your issues, you can be transparent, you can be honest and vulnerable, with, know what you're really dealing with. And I'm telling you, when you get that in your life, when you get some we, some us, some community into your life, you're going to see the conversation between you and God changes. It changes. It matures. It goes to a whole new level. And I'm so excited. Season three of small groups are coming up. We, we take breaks every year, but we're about to get ready to jump into it. You'll see a lot of them come up. They begin September 2nd. They go all the way to December 2nd. Okay? So it's, it's I get connected. Some of you need to get connected to a group. Group link is August 26 at 7 p.m. That's a Sunday. If you want to see the, the group leaders face-to-face, because -face, we have it listed online, got pamphlets and all that stuff, but if you want to see them face-to-face, -face, you can even come to group link on August 26. And some of you haven't yet, and you need to jump in. Man, it's time for you to grow up 
It's time for you to, to mature up in the things of God. Some of you, you need to be leading a group already. Uh, you know, you've been in Christ, you've been walking it, you know the word, and you're allowing some things to keep you, and it's time to do an inventory and say, you know what, there is another level. There is more that God has for me. You want to hear God, but Jesus says some of you don't hear because you don't mature. Let me be very honest with you. Maturity comes when we stop making excuses and we start making changes. That's when maturity comes. All right, here's the fourth one. The fourth soil condition, the fourth scenario that every one of us are in today. Some of us can't hear God because we're polluted. Some of us can't hear God because we're distracted. Some of us can't hear God because there's all that stuff going on. Here's the last one. Write it down. Number four, the prepared heart. The prepared heart. Luke 8, 15 says this. But the seed on good soil stand, stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. It's those who have just taken a spiritual inventory, have identified some rocks, some things, some distractions, some pollutions, and who have brought them, got them, brought them to the light of Christ, who have tilled the soil of their heart enough to prepare their heart. God's voice is clearest in a prepared environment. In a prepared environment. Let me illustrate this. There were several months ago, we moved, uh, the family, we moved from one house to, an, to another, and there was a side, on the side of our house, Veronica's going to be so embarrassed, don't be embarrassing, but the side of our house, there was a little strip, a, a, and it's like a worthless strip. It's just, how I many of you know what I'm talking about? It's like, why did they leave a strip of nothing? They can't do anything. It's not big enough to play. It's not, no, you can't put toys over there. The sprinklers are jacked up. It's always soggy over there and stuff. So it just became the catch-all for all my bro broken stuff and junk. Over years, it just piled up. And so we got to move, and I'm like, I got to get rid of this stuff. And I put it off so long, Veronica's like, you need to get rid of that. So I, I'm loading it all up, and there's just so much. It's nasty. And, and underneath all the nasty junk in this moist, moldy ground, it was a blue tarp. It was all folded, and, and I just knew. Uh, I was like, there's, uh, I'm, I don't want to get, because some of you know what I'm talking about. What's living and crawling underneath that thing I don't like I don't like crawlers. I don't like spiders. I don't like bugs. Don't don't get me wrong. I kill them. I'll kill them and stuff. But I don't like them. And so I'm like, eh, 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 eh. I'm trying to get a stick and stuff. And I probably went back to that thing like three or four times. I ain't gonna lie. I called Grace. Grace, come help your dad out. You get that in. Come on, we do it together. And uh, I did scream once or twice. But but we flipped that thing over in. The nasty, I mean, spiders and crawlers and creepy stuff that was that was under there. I left it. I left it unturned for so long. And all kinds of creepy crawlers and bugs and mold and that lurked underneath. They were growing and multiplying and inviting all their friends going, come on, this place is great. You know, come and listen, I didn't need to personally invite any of those bugs to come live in my yard. They, all, all I had to do was create an environment conducive for them. And they just invited themselves. The environment I prepared, listen, was the invitation. See, some of you, the, the, the soil of your heart, the, the environment you have created in your heart is attracting the wrong things. I know you didn't invite that disaster. Some of you are attracting the wrong people, the wrong relationships, the wrong habits, the wrong sin, the wrong spirits, because the environment of your heart, the soil of your heart is attracting the creepy crawlers that lurk underneath the shade of darkness and the moist areas. But what would it look like if you just kind of just lifted that up and prepared that soil? I'm telling you, God would change your life. If you prepared the soil of your heart, a prepared heart, God visits a prepared environment. You were meant for this. I'm telling you, you guys, you guys were meant for this. It was always intended to, to be this way. When I was praying um, about the series and I was asking the Holy Spirit to help me, I want, I want so badly for Discovery Church not to be a bunch of people that are on a religious journey do's and don'ts and church attendance and, and fixing themselves and then going and then not able to but then trying hard and fixing themselves again and but to actually have a relationship an intimate and personal relationship with a true and living God powerful to save when I was asking the Holy Spirit how God how do I 
He just said, prepare them. Prepare them to meet with me. So let me give you, let me give you three words to prepare to hear God. Here they are. Number one, repent. Repent. And it's not a bad word. If you're going the wrong direction today, don't sweat it. Just turn around. Can I say that again? If you're going the wrong direction today, don't sweat it. Just turn around. Our God is so gracious and merciful. We'll forgive and save every time. That's what makes him so good. He's the God of the do-over. The God of the fresh start. Just turn. And then after that, after you just, just turn around, second thing, refocus. Refocus. Like in this season, get your sights right. Get your priorities right. You know, I'm going to get rid of some distractions in my life. I'm going to renew some, some devotions in my life. I'm going to get back to reading the Bible. And listen, if you haven't been reading the Bible lately, don't sweat it. Just start tomorrow. If you haven't cracked open your Bible or your app or whatever it is, don't sweat it. Just, just start tomorrow. Refocus. Someone told me, you know, Pastor, I'm going to start reading my one-year Bible again, but I'm, I'm in April. It's going to take me a long time to catch up. I said, no, 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 man, don't do that to yourself. Just start today. Whatever the day is today, just start on that day, whatever devotion, and just, just re repent, refocus. And number three, prepare for revival. Revive me, God. Awaken me, God. Stir me, God. I want to love, I want to fall in love with you all over again. See, you were... You were made for this church. You were made to know God like this. To be led by Him personally and intimately. Not to just do it yourself, gut instinct style. To know the shepherd's voice. So much so that Jesus says this in John 8, 47. Whoever is of God, what do they do? Hears the words of God. That's how you know. That I'm in this personal, intimate relationship. He says the reason why you don't hear them is because you don't have a personal and intimate relationship with God. He says you're not hearing God because you don't know God. It's not a religion. It's not a bunch of rules. It's a relationship that he wants to have with you. And some of you know it. You've even responded to this. Like when you first got saved, it's because you heard the voice. You heard God speak into your life and call you by name. Revelations 3 and 20 talks about that. Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And in the Greek there, it's, it's the continuous verb. It means knocking continuously. That's what Jesus is saying. I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. I'm not going anywhere. I'm knocking. Here I am. I know who you are. I know where you're at. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. I'm just knocking. You know, this parable is called the parable of the sower. It's not, it's not even called the parable of the soil. We talk about the soil. The soil is the hard positions. But Jesus gave a different title because there is a different overarching theme, I think, that overrides all this. That it's the parable of the sower. It's the parable of God who sows the voice and the word of God into our life. There is no farmer worth his weight in salt that would knowingly sow his harvest seed onto the path. That's ridiculous. No farmer who's got any ounce of wit in him would sow seed into rocky soil or to hard soil or, or among weeds. Are you kidding me? No, no good farmer would do that. But this is called the parable of the sower because our God, no matter who you are today, no matter what's polluting your life, no matter what's distracting your life, God is saying, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I am knocking and I'm sowing seed and I know who you are and I know where you are and I love you still. I'm not going anywhere. I'm standing and I'm knocking. If you would just hear my voice and open the door, I will change your life. You were made for this, church. You were made for this, to know God intimately and personally. Some of you even experiencing that right now. You hear a knock on your heart. Can we do something? Can we just go to God in prayer all over this worship center? Can we just bow our heads together? Some of you are here today right now. And you hear it knocking on the door of your heart. 
And I don't know if it's because the environment or maybe the situations of your life have led to this moment that God has ushered you to this place to hear his voice. Yeah, there's things that are in there. Yeah, there's some rocks in the soil. Yeah, there's some priorities. But God says, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm knocking. Let me in. Some of you used to have an open door relationship with God. But you've closed the door to him. And today he's knocking again. Saying, come on. Let me back in. Some of you ran from God so far. And you, you, didn't, you thought you were running from God. But he didn't go anywhere. He stayed. Knocking knocking on your heart. And right now, I believe, right now, you're hearing the knock of Jesus. And I want to encourage you to respond to the voice of God. That's what that is. And open the door. Invite him into your life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. You'll get a fresh start, a do-over today. Restored. Here's the thing. You can't prepare your own heart. You can't clean your own life, your own heart. You can't do that. It's only by inviting Jesus into your life that he can prepare the, your, the soil of your heart to be able to hear and respond clearly to a God who loves you, wants to walk with you, direct you, and lead you through life.